Today we will be talking about the concept of soil erosion. Under soil erosion, we would be discussing three major parameters. First is the cause of soil erosion, the various causes, the effects of soil erosion, and how can we conserve it or how can we prevent soil erosion. So these will be the basic ideas that we would be discussing today. Now let's start with what is soil erosion. So whenever there is loosening of the rock or the soil strata, it is known as soil erosion and this can be caused due to any exogenetic force. Exogenetic from the word itself exo means external. So any external force that causes loosening of the rock. So if this is the rock structure and the rock is loosened, it would roll down the slope and this loosening of the rock is known as soil erosion. So whenever there is soil erosion that is occurring, we can say removal of the soil is more than the accumulation of the soil and if this is true we can say the region is having soil erosion. Now this is a diagram to demonstrate how the soil erosion takes place. So we have a mountain or a piece of land here, soil here and this strata which is given in yellow color is the topmost layer of the soil. So this diagram will help us to depict how the soil erosion takes place. So first of all, let's understand. Whenever as I said there is loosening of the rock, the top, uh, the top soil gets loosened and it rolls down the slope. Where if there is a slope or it's, it rolls around the flat surface and that loosening of the soil is known as soil erosion. When there is soil erosion, there would be displacement of the soil. that would take place. So we can say erosion is a function of erosivity and erodibility. Now what does the term erosivity and erodibility means? Erosivity is the ability to erode. So these two are kind of mutually opposite terms we can say. So erosivity is the capability or the ability to erode the soil while erodibility is the resistance that is offered to restrict the erosion. So that is the resistance offered to restrict the erosion. So erosion is a function of how much erosion, uh, how much the soil has the ability to erode and the resistance that is being offered. Now there are various factors that affect erosion. Some of the common factors that we would be discussing today are first you have rain. So as you can say when the, uh, see when the rain falls you have the top layer of the soil that is being eroded away. So you have the falling rainfall here and the erosion of the soil that takes place. So first and the foremost factor of which affects erosion is rainfall. The next factor is wind. So if there is heavy wind that is blowing through the region, the top layer would get eroded out and that is another factor that affects erosion. The next is you have a kind of deforestation activity that is going on. So what would happen here is you have a tree which has its root in the soil. If this tree has been cut down, what would happen? The soil that is here would get loosened out and that soil would slip down. So you have a tree cutting activity that is going on and when the tree is cut, the soil gets loosened out here and it moves down. So tree cutting is another activity or deforestation. Now next is slope. If there is a stable uh, uniform land with no slope then when there would be soil erosion there would be a brief tumbling of the top layer and it would move like few millimeters or something 
but in case of a slope which is very steep or the gradient of the slope is steep, steep what would happen is the soil erosion that is taking place here would roll down and accumulate on the lower layers so as we can see here it's just shaking movement but here it's the complete slide of the soil of the top layer of the soil that goes down so this is how slope affects is another factor that causes uh, soil erosion beyond these there is a major factor that affects the soil erosion is the nature of the rock some of the rocks like igneous rocks which are very hard the erosion is very difficult in contrast to igneous rocks if you have sedimentary rocks which are made up of layers of sediments the erosion is much more pronounced in this case as compared to the igneous rock so nature of rock is another important factor that affects soil erosion so these were the major factors that we have talked about that affect soil erosion now let's go on to the causes so the first cause here is the causes that are human induced so the first is monocropping if you are cropping uh, the same crop in the region for say consequent period what would happen is the fertility of the soil would reduce and that similar cropping pattern would definitely affect the soil uh, capacity to hold water and finally what would happen is the soil erosion would be more pronounced in such a cases deforestation we have already seen the animation before so deforestation if you are cutting the trees at a widespread uh, for a widespread area the soil which is bounded by the roots of the trees gets loosened out and that causes one of the that is one of the primary reason, uh, reasons for erosion then you have shifting cultivation and sh shifting cultivation what happens you grow plantation in one region and then you move on to the another plot of land leaving this plot of land barren when this plot of land is barren what would happen is since there are no uh, deep roots or no roots of the trees to hold the soil there would be pronounced erosion in this case so shifting cultivation is another human factor that induces soil erosion next is overgrazing so if there is a farm plot with good quality grasslands and there are lot of animals that are grazing into it that would destroy nearly all the cropping patterns as a result overgrazing is another important cause of soil erosion and barren ground again the same reason what happened for with the shifting cultivation since the piece of the land is barren it has it do it does not have uh, trees which are having deep roots to hold the soil whenever there is water flow or uh, instant rain or wind there would be removal of the top soil and that removal of the top soil will lead to soil erosion the next is natural causes natural causes as we have already discussed in the previous factors rain and wind are the two prominent causes the next is topographical factors under topographic factors we have talked about the nature of the rock and the soil uh, the slope of the slope of the land so these are some of the factors that would affect soil erosion then is vegetation type so there are various types of root systems some of the crops have a root system that is spread out others have a tap root system which have deeper roots so the rocks which have deeper roots tend to hold the soil much more at a deeper level as compared to those which have spread out root systems so vegetation type affects the soil erosion and the soil bounding capacity the bounding capacity of the soil and finally there is drought when there is drought most of the vegetation gets dry so you would have plants and vegetations getting dry so you would again have a lot of patches of land where you do not have enough cultivation to bind the soil particles some of the striking forces includes as we have already talked about human interference or human factors is one of the major causes for soil erosion then you have high speed wind heavy rainfall flood in any specific region or effect of glaciation due to glaciation if there is meltdown of the glacier 
there would be huge quantity of water that would flow out which might lead to flood and that would again directly and indirectly affect the uh, soil uh, the soil uh, soil type of the region the next is some of the degenerating forces include slope gradient as we have mentioned in the previous slide so the regions which have steeper slope are prone to severe erosion as compared to the areas which do, which have uniform flat land then type of soil again affects the soil erosion so if you have as we mentioned the igneous rocks there would be less of soil erosion as compared to the sedimentary rocks so type of soil and rocks affect the erosion now what is the effect of soil erosion soil erosion would loosen out the top layers since the top layer would get loose it would decrease the soil capacity and the capacity to grow agricultural uh, crops or vegetation the basic reason behind most of the fertile elements are found in the top layers of the soil and if that top layer of the soil washes away the fertility of the soil decreases then you have deposition of sand on agricultural land so if you have a soil erosion that is taking place from the slope and here is a patch of agricultural land so this soil erosion the sand coming from here will deposit on the agricultural land as a result the uh, the capacity of this land for cultivation would again decrease because you have a layer of sand that is deposited on the top of the agricultural layer agricultural land and finally flooding of the stream so if there is lot of water or overflow of waters in the streams it would affect the nearby areas as a result the soil erosion uh, would occur in the nearby areas or the vicinity of the river basin now let's understand we have talked about the factors that affect soil erosion the causes of soil erosion and the effects of soil erosion now what we would be discussing is the most important section that is how do we conserve soil so soil conservation is an important parameter that we need to understand and there are various ways in which one can conserve the soil the first and the foremost that we would be discussing today are the fundamental methods these fundamental methods include controlling the developmental activity so any urban area any industrial area nowadays need to have demarcated areas for agriculture for mining for residential and commercial schemes so a plant development or plant developmental activity would definitely provide a boost to soil conservation the basic reason being if there is unplanned activity across the city the soil erosion which be, will be much more pronounced in those areas as compared to the region where there is plant activity and there are dedicated sectors for residential commercial and agricultural activity control of flood is another important parameter because the river that is flowing and the river basin that is that it caters to if there is overflow of the stream what would happen is the soil that is in the nearby vicinity areas will get eroded and would go with the water runoff so controlling the flood is a prime concern in specifically in urban areas where there are problems of flash floods so that would prevent the top layers of the river basin to flow off with the water current the next is protection of the forest there are many government policies that have been implemented to protect the forest prevention of forest fires that's another important part which we can include also in forest protection so forest fires is another reason where you have a lot of uh, due to forest fires you have lot of trees that vanish away and as a result a lot of soil or lot of land gets barren and this barren land then again is prone to soil erosion afforestation or planting of more trees so here we have a demonstration for afforestation so you have a set of trees that are being planted so what hap what is happening here is these two moles of uh, land are not prone to as much erosion as compared to this so if there is a heavy rain or a kind of heavy wind what would happen is since the root system here is strong this section won't be affected that severely as compared to this section so what would happen if i plant another tree here 
So if I plant another tree here, the chances of erosion of this piece of land would decrease. So that is an important practice of afforestation that is essential for soil conservation. If you are planting a tree, what is happening here is the land, the erosion that was taken place previously is now bound by the root system of these trees and despite of the wind or the rain that is occurring, the trees will hold the, uh, the soil system here and the erosion would decrease. Next is the various agronomic methods. Now these are some of the important methods that we need to understand today. The first is mulching. What does mulching mean? Mulching means creating an extra layer of soil on, above the, on the top of the existing soil. So if there is any sudden cause that would lead to soil erosion, what would happen is the top layer would vanish away. So what you have put on the top of the existing soil will go off and the soil will retain its fertility. So what would happen if you, have a, if you have a plot of land where you are doing mulching, there would be increase in infiltration, evaporation would decrease and the surface runoff would decrease. So mulching would increase the, so that suppose this is the existing layer of the soil. Under mulching what you are doing, you are adding an extra layer of the soil and if there is an erosion taking place, this extra layer goes off. So you have the original layer that is retained. Then you have crop choice. Under crop choice, you try to choose crops which have a good coverage. So when you have a good coverage, what would happen is the surface runoff would decrease and this would prevent soil erosion. Contour farming is planting the trees along the edges of the slope. So you have trees that are planted in the contour fashion. Mixed cropping means you are cropping trees uh, of various types. So some would have uh, good, some are good in nitrogen, say some are good in phosphorus. Others have long root system, some have short root system. So since there is a mixed type of cropping, the area would be protected because there would be some kind of trees which would be able to hold the soil particles much more intact as compared to the other section of the plantation that is taking place. Then you have a strip cropping. A strip cropping means towards the end of the uh, land you are trying to do a kind of cropping that would prevent the flow of uh, soil particles outside the land. You need good water management techniques. So water harvesting, canal irrigation, drip irrigation, overhead tanks are some of the classic examples of water management to, uh, to do soil conservation. Excessive salinity, if there is excessive salinity, it would imbalance the pH of the land and it would affect the uh, soil structure. So management of salinity is another important issue and preventing overgrazing as we have already discussed. So here you have an animation to depict the mulching. So you have the existing layer of soil which is below. You have an extra layer of soil with you. So what you do is you put an extra layer of soil on the existing layer of soil and then you try to grow the plantation and that is known as mulching. The next is a strip cropping. We have already discussed. So you, what you are doing is you are trying to grow the crops along the edges. So when you are trying to grow the crops along the edges, if, even if there is a kind of soil erosion, the soil might stumble a bit here but ultimately the erosion would be prevented. So it's another method of conservation. There is another thing which is known as indigenous crop boundaries. What does indigenous crop boundary means? Under indigenous crop boundaries, what I am trying to do, what we try to do is, especially it is common in village areas, so you have a native crop that is being grown and if there is some exotic variety that is coming in, you have the exotic variety in the center of the farm and towards the periphery, you have the indigenous crop which has good soil binding, soil binding capacity. So this exotic crop is grown in between and surrounding to that you have the indigenous cropping pattern and that, that is another common method or common practice for soil conservation in villages. The next is how can we maintain soil fertility? There are various methods to maintain the soil fertility. First is fallowing. 
Now you might say in the previous uh, causes we have talked about if you leave the land fallow there would be runoff and there would be problem of soil erosion. But leaving land fallow as it is done in shifting irritation also promotes or regains fertility of the soil. So if you leave a section of land fallow for a duration the soil fertility is regained. Then is cover cropping. What does cover cropping exa exactly means? There are some crops which take uh, longer time to grow say two years or four years for a single crop to come up so what do you do is you have a plot of land you have seeds here for the crops that have longer gestation period and in between those you grow you interplant crops that have shorter that come up in shorter duration in a season or two so what would happen is since you have the seeds of other plants if there is a flash flood or uh, heavy wind or rain, the top layer might be eroded. But since you are interplanting it with a seasonal crop, there would be some crop at all point of time. And this crop would prevent the erosion of the crop that is that we are trying to actually grow. So some of the intercropping crops that are usually used are cotton or maize, quick growing crops. Then you have crop rotation. You rotate the crop one by other that maintains the fertility of the soil. So if there is a crop which requires lot of nitrogen fertilizers and the next crop which requires lot of potassium fer uh, phosphorus fertilizers or potassium fertilizers, you can interchange those, those crops and this would help regain the fertility. Then you have soil organisms. There are some soil organisms like earthworms which are known as farmer's friend. What they do is they create pores within the soil and through this pores what happens is the aeration is increased in the soil and that aeration promotes soil fertility. So soil organisms, use of fertilizers, you can say balanced use of fertilizers or use of organic fertilizers, then drainage and land reclamation. If a soil is excessively drained what would happen is the top layer or the topmost layer which is fertile will get washed off. So proper drainage facilities should be there in the farms and that would help in land reclamation. Soil pH, if there is lot of pollutants in the soil, it can convert the soil either to acidic form or basic form. So a balanced soil pH is important. Then what, does we mean, what, do, what do we mean by non-tilling farming methods? So there is a sect of uh, a people who propose that when you are doing tilling or when you are plowing the fields what is happening is you are using some kind of manual or uh, automatic instruments so when you are using those instruments the natural fauna and flora of the soil is killed so when you are using say plowing practice what is happening happening is the soil organisms or say earthworms might get killed so leaving the farm non till is another important practice that would help to maintain the soil fertility and finally is the use of organic manure. The next is mechanical methods. There are numerous mechanical methods that are used to promote soil conservation. The first and the foremost that we would talk about is basin listing. Basin listing what does it mean is you have a kind of series of basins that are uh, put along the uh, end of the farm or the edge of the farm and that help to retain the rainwater. So you have series of basins that come up and these basins retain the water and then they are used finally as uh, irrigation purposes for the soil. Subsoiling means there is a section of hard rock. This hard rock is broken down into smaller rocks and that is known as subsoiling you have contour bunding. Contour bunding means you are trying to create embankments on the slope. So you have towards the edges of the uh, farm, you are trying to create bunds and that is known as contour bunding. Then you have bench terracing. You are farming in benches or stages. Bench terracing is also known as terraced farming, uh, common in hilly areas. Then you have channel terraces. Channel terraces are usually found uh, where the 
Rain is around, uh, rainfall is around more than 80 centimeters per year, but the requirement is less than 80 centimeters per year. So what happens is you create channels of water and those channels of water are created on the lower edges and they help to uh, prevent soil erosion. Then is contour plowing. Contour plowing again means you are uh, trying to uh, plow across the slope of the elevated land. And finally you have water harvesting techniques. There are numerous techniques as we have already talked about. You have drip irrigation. So that's drop by drop irrigation. Uh, that is a common practice in Israel these days. Then you have canal irrigation. A classic example is in the Indra Gandhi Nahar Pariyojana that is in Rajasthan. And then you have overhead water tanks uh, at the top of the houses which is stored the water. The rain water harvesting is another method that is prominent. So these water harvesting techniques or water management techniques help to improve the soil erosion. So as you can see here, this is an example of subsoiling. So you have hard rock, you have a soil uh, that hard rock kinds of breaks down and you have subsoiling that takes place. So these are some of the mechanical measures that are discussed. With this we cover the complete uh, lesson on soil erosion and the conservation techniques. In the next class we would be talking about the various uh, types of soils across the globe. You can subscribe to Exam Race channel for any further updates. Till then have a good day ahead.